If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. 52 degrees in downtown Sylacauga. Annie Osmond, Miss Childersburg, joins us this morning. And Annie, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you with us today. Thanks and for having uh, me. graduate of Childersburg High School. Yes, sir. Tell us a, a little bit, uh, update us a little bit about, about where you are as Miss Childersburg now. Okay, I graduated from Childersburg High School in 2017 and took off to Auburn University which was really fun for me. I followed in my brother's footsteps and we both followed in our mom's footsteps. So down in Auburn, I've gotten to be a part of the SGA. I've been a senator. Um, I've gotten to represent the College of Science and Mathematics. I'm now studying psychology and I'm planning to apply to occupational therapy school in the fall. So I'll have about three more years of school after I finish up my senior year at Auburn. And I was crowned Miss Childersburg in December. So that's been something that I have really enjoyed getting to do, represent my hometown. Um, and it gives me another reason to come back home a little more often than I probably should instead of studying all the time. And is a former star student here uh, on TV 47 too. And uh, what's it been like since you were crowned Miss Childersburg? Well, a lot has changed. It's, yeah. been, it's been a lot different than I expected it to be, honestly. But it's been really wonderful getting to work with my amazing director, Miss Anita Mahaffey. She has supported me 100%, and she's been there every step of the way during the unknown and the uncertain times. So we've just been preparing and continuing to get ready for Miss Alabama as if it were going to still happen the first week of June. We're not necessarily sure exactly when it's going to happen, but hopefully sometime this summer. So we're just continuing to prepare mm. and to be ready for whenever that time does now, come. What adjustments have you had to make personally? I am not the greatest fan of technology, <laughs> and all classes just went straight to online after spring break. So luckily we got to enjoy our spring break right mm -hmm. before Corona took off really big. Um, but adjusting to online was really difficult for me. I'm a huge people person, and I love to interact with people. So sitting out in my bedroom every day was a lot different than going to class and getting to pass people out on the concourse. So that was a huge adjustment for me, but we made it work, and I'm luckily very healthy, and so is all of my family, so I'm appreciative for that. Now, uh, Miss Alabama scheduled you for June, right? Now, that's kind of up in the air a little bit right they, now. Um, they told us recently that it won't be the first week of June as originally planned, but it will hopefully be towards the end of summer. They're waiting to hear back from a bunch of people about guidelines and how many people can meet at a certain time because there are a large number of us competing. So how does that personally affect you as far as preparing and getting out and seeing people and stuff like that? It's um, it's been a little more difficult. I know a bunch of people aren't able to really practice their talents as much as they would like to because dance studios are closed and you can't have in-person meetings with your vocal coaches or your baton coach. So it's a lot different preparing than ever before, mm -hmm. but um, it's we're learning to adjust to it. And I think that's one thing that this organization really teaches you is to just kind of go with the flow and be in the moment. So that's something that I'm really focusing on is just trying to take advantage of the moment that I have and the people that I'm with at that moment and just preparing as if it were still going to happen in the beginning of June. And whenever it does happen, I know that I'll be ready. What about your platform? Uh, I get to work with Alabama Childhood Food Solutions. Uh, my That's a great organization. Name, it is. It's it's very near to my heart. And actually, a little plug before I get to going. Um, this Saturday on Highway 21 at the Piggly Wiggly from 9 to 2, Alabama Childhood Food Solutions will be doing a non-perishable food item drive. So if you're stopping by to get groceries or have a few extra cans, I know they would love to have um, anything you could donate because they're now feeding 750 families. Um, I can think back to a few months ago when it was just 300, but ever since this pandemic has happened, there are lots of students out of school. There are lots of families who are unemployed now, and so it's amazing to get to see the impact that they're having on our community and those around us. I know they've reached out to seven counties, I think, now, mm -hmm. and they're just they're reaching out to a lot of people, but that's my platform. That's what I get to work with is Alabama Childhood Food Solutions, and um, I partner a lot with Talladega County Schools and Sylacauga City Schools to raise money um, for Alabama Childhood Food solutions to then give back to those same students with food. Yeah, the, the Tyler County School System, as the Silicon City School System, has raised a lot of funds yes. to help organizations like uh, Alabama Childhood Food Solutions. Yes, I, uh, I've partnered every time with some sort of organization, but most of the time it has been Talladega County Schools, and I've raised over $35,000 in just the last few years for Alabama Childhood Food Solutions. So I'm super grateful for Dr. Suzanne Lacey and all of the schools and their support because they truly makes such an impact on ACFS and the number of families that they're able to reach, including times like right now. Um, how did you get started in uh, pageantry? 
I did a few pageants when I was little, but I refused to wear my shoes that day, and I yelled into the audience to ask my mom the question that the, you the lady not. asked. She asked what my pet's name was, and I couldn't remember. Yeah. I don't. That's not really something you forget usually, but I yelled out into the audience. How old were you then? I was four. Okay. I was All tiny. Right. I actually won. Somehow I ended up winning that day. I was that four. That may have it. <laughs> um, but I took a break then, and I didn't really start competing in the Miss America organization until I was a junior in high school. Mm. Annie Osmond, Miss Childersburg, how did it feel when they called your name and placed that crown on your head? I don't even know if words can describe it. <laughs> Honestly, my mom was Miss Childersburg. Back in the day, I won't say how many years I might get in trouble. Yeah. But just to be able to be crowned Miss Childersburg also after my mom and to represent my hometown that's given so much to me. I know there are so many people probably watching right now that... Um, had a huge part in raising me and um, helping me become who I am today. And so being able to represent them all across the state and to wear Miss Childersburg across my chest means so much to me, and I don't take it lightly. Yeah. And, uh, you already mentioned uh, a couple of people that have been instrumental in your success. Talk about that a little bit more, and I'm sure there are other uh, people who have helped you too. Yes, there. Are, I, I have so many people. It would literally take me all day to name them all and thank them. But two people I'm extremely grateful for, Miss Linda and Mr. Jim Jones, who are the founders of Alabama Childhood Food Solutions. They kind of took me under their wing and had no idea who I was, but they loved me and they molded me into the leader that I am now. I feel like because of them, I had great people to follow in their footsteps, mm -hmm. but I wasn't afraid to say, hey, let's create this fundraiser. Hey, let's go out into this community where we've never been before and serve here. So I'm just really grateful for them, but especially every single person that has ever loved me and helped lead me along the way mm -hmm. to get me where I am now. Uh, with the Miss Alabama pageant uh schedule for early June, which won't happen, of course, at that particular time. How can this affect you with your school later on in the fall? That's an interesting question. I'm honestly not very sure. Um, we're hoping that it'll be at the very end of summer, so right before we go back to school. Mm -hmm. But if not, um, I'm sure we'll adapt and make something work. The organization puts scholarship and success. That's two points of the four points of the crown. Mm -hmm. um, and so scholarship and school is extremely important to the organization, and I know that they'll consider that when making the decision, so it's best for everyone. But hopefully we can find a way to squeeze it into a weekend or whatever we have to do if it does take place during school. Uh with the COVID-19 uh, crisis and, uh, you know, it's been going on now since, I guess, March, uh, maybe late February, a lot of people are closed in, uh, not able to get out and do some of the things they normally do. And you can tell by looking at me, some of us have added a little weight. <laughs> how, how have you stayed in shape? I actually started doing CrossFit a few weeks before Corona took off. And that's something I never thought I would do, but it's been extremely fun. And our CrossFit classes have continued to do Zoom workouts. So the same um, company that we use to continue our classes mm -hmm. online, I've been doing CrossFit online, which is a little different. You might have to use like a bag from your living room or something as a weight instead of a dumbbell, but it works and gets the job done. And I've just kind of been trying to stay outside, stay active and run around on the farm or walk my dog, just anything I can do to kind of stay out of being stuck in the house all the time. Yeah, and uh, you know, we can eat 12 meals a day. And oh yeah. <laughs> so, Annie Osmond is Miss Childerberg. She's our guest this morning. Speak this morning about what you feel your responsibilities are toward younger girls, young girls that, that'll be walking in your footsteps before long. I would like to say that I feel like I'm the leader I am today because I had outstanding role models to mm -hmm. look up to when I was a young girl. Um, and I just think it's important that we remember as title holders and really just as people in general, with or without this crown on your head, there are so many people looking up to you and who worship the ground that you walk on because to them, you're a princess and you're a really cool person. Um, but to me, they're the cool people. And it's just amazing to see um, the joy that lights up in their mm -hmm. eyes when they see the crown on your head. And I think it's just really important to remember that there are always little eyes watching you copying every single move that you make and that's something that you have to remember you know behind closed doors when you're rather would you rather work out this morning mm -hmm. or stay in bed you know that's a decision that will affect the way that little girls look up to me later yeah. uh, much bigger stage coming up uh, this fall for you in Miss Alabama yes sir 
I'm super excited about that. I um, got to dance my entire life with Judy Rochelle School of Dance in Childersburg, and um, that was something that I really enjoyed. But I've had four ankle surgeries, so I've had to <laughs> shift over to vocal. Um, so that's a it's very different for me. Last year at Miss Alabama, I got to sing on stage. So this year, I'm not feeling so nervous. I'm kind of excited to just go out there and sing and have fun with it. But I do miss dancing on the big stage. <laughs> You talk about singing. Uh, what what are the arrangements that you do as far as singing is concerned? I sing the song tomorrow from the musical Annie. No pun intended, but <laughs> um, I sing that song. And it's the Indina Menzel version, so it's a little different than the Broadway version, but it's super fun. And I just love the message that this song brings, especially in a time like right now. Uh, my favorite Bible verse is Romans eight eighteen: "The pain you're suffering now cannot compare to the joy that will come in the morning." And that's something that I truly think about every single time. I practice my talent is the sun will come out tomorrow and although right now things seem very uncertain and we're not sure what's going to come next the sun will come out tomorrow and God's faithful promises yeah. will still stand. You mentioned your mom uh, former Miss Childersburg as well yes, uh, how's that helped you? Uh, she has been the biggest supporter throughout my entire pageant experience and really my whole life she's just been the number one person right there every single time but um, considering that she's kind of already been through this experience, she can give advice from a different angle. And that's something that I truly appreciate mm -hmm. is having kind of the inside opinion, but also the outside opinion of what she thinks might look better, or what might sound better. And it's just been really fun getting to do this journey with her. Andy Osmond, Miss Childersburg, she was crowned in December of uh, 2019. And it seemed like forever now, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. The last month, well, March, I feel like lasted forever. And then April kind of just went by in the blink. I had mm -hmm. finals and um, just trying to finish getting everything done through online classes. And now we're already in May, which is crazy to me. Mm. I feel like time's kind of going by quickly now in quarantine. Talk about your future. I plan to apply to occupational therapy school in the fall, which would be about three more years of school. And then afterwards, I think I want to work with children in recovery from like trauma accidents. Um, occupational therapists can work in many different fields and geriatrics, children, special needs. So the opportunity is very wide. But um, I'm kind of hoping to narrow that down yeah. during my time during occupational therapy Obviously, school. your faith is important to you. Yes, sir. Um, I was raised at Fayetteville United Methodist Church, and Brother John, Oh he, yeah. Yes, he actually is related to us. He's my cousin, but I don't think I would have chosen to go anywhere else if I had the opportunity. He has just been so wonderful in teaching me the Word, and I just remember ever since I was a little girl, even sitting in children's church, he would always find a way <laughs> to make the message make sense to whoever he was yeah. sharing with. So. Yeah. What drives Annie Osmond? Um, I just, I think really what drives me is the people that have poured into me and just knowing that it's my turn to give back to them mm -hmm. because my entire life I've been given to abundantly and I've been poured into and I've been loved by so many people, an entire community, the entire city of Childersburg and even people outside of that. And so it drives me every morning to just wake up and to give back to the people who have believed in me and cared for me and loved me so much. Mm -hmm. Annie Osmond, Miss Childersburg, our guest this morning. And it's always a pleasure. It's good to see you today. Thank Continued you for success. having me. Thank you so much. More Daybreak, just ahead.